Battletoads is arguably one of the best known games for the NES. Released in 1991 by Tradewest, it is famous for its beautiful graphics, varied gameplay, rich animation and a great soundtrack. But there is another reason why it is famous. Its difficulty. It would be safe to assume that most players have never got past the third of its 12 levels, Turbo Tunnel. The reason? The game was well received with mostly positive reviews, and in Brazil it was indifferent. It was featured on the cover of two main Brazilian video game magazines at the time, a song games and video game. Video game dedicated space to the game in not just one but two of its issues, presenting a complete strategy to beat it. As any other kid back in the day, I wanted the game badly. But as many other Brazilian kids, I wouldn't get the original NES cartridge, but a bootleg one instead even though we didn't even know that it was a bootleg. You see, back in 1991, Nintendo didn't have an official distributor in Brazil. That would happen only two years later, in 1993, when they signed a deal with Playtronic, a joint venture between Estrela, a well-established toy company, and Gradiente, an electronics company formerly responsible for the official release of the Atari 2600 in Brazil. So anyone in Brazil interested in Nintendo games had two options, importing, which was very expensive and far from being easy to do back then, or buying NES clones and bootleg cartridges sold by the local companies. But the companies selling those consoles and cartridges were well established in tax paying companies such as Gradiente or CCE, so many kids didn't know they were buying pirate products, as there was no official alternative on the market. Some of those companies even went the extra length of producing their own cover art, manual, and all the bells and whistles you would get from an official product. Others would make cheaper products, releasing games in blisters or simple cardboard sleeves. Battletoads was then released by several of those companies. My copy happened to be made by Connector, one of the cheap companies that sold games in cardboard sleeves. Connector games had the NTDEC logo stamped on their labels. NTDEC is a well-known Taiwanese bootleg company, so I imagine Connector imported those games from Taiwan and made their own cover art printing their labels here. Connector cartridges are pretty generic, with generic images on their labels, which wouldn't always reflect the game content. I have three games released by them, Mega Man, Dragon's Lair and Battletoads, and all of them share the same generic robot image on their labels. But my copy of Battletoads had something different from the other Brazilian Battletoad releases. The game intro was in Portuguese. How cool was that? I don't know of many other NES games from that period that were translated. I mean, ROM hacking wasn't something new to Brazilian companies. Since the Atari 2600 days you had companies changing copyright info on cartridges to promote their own brands. In 1991, a company called Milmar got a license from American Video Entertainment and released a modified version of Ultimate League Soccer called Futebol, replacing the national teams with Brazilian teams. As for translations, in that same year Tectoy would release Phantasy Star for the Master System, completely translated into Portuguese. But this was something different. It wasn't so simple as just changing copyright info in a title screen, and translating a whole game was something that only a company with an official license, like Tectoy or Milmar, would be willing to do. Well, pretty soon you discover that only the intro is translated and the dialogue is not. But that didn't make the fact that I was able to read and understand the backstory less cool. I played my cartridge a lot when I was a kid, and even though I never beat it, I managed to get somewhat far in the game, reaching the 9th of 12 levels. The dreaded Turbo Tunnel wasn't a challenge for me anymore, and the game got even harder after that. As I couldn't beat the game, I ended up quitting, and shortly after that my brother got a Sega Mega Drive, so I shifted from one platform to another. Several years passed since I last played the game on my own NES clone, but the memories never abandoned me. Recently I decided to give it another try, but when I started playing it again, 
something felt different. After I beat the first level, this happened. The game just jumped from level 1 to level 3, skipping level 2 entirely. Remember when I said that it would be safe to assume that most people never got past the Turbo Tunnel? That means that for most people, all they knew about the game was those first three levels. If you kept trying to beat the Turbo Tunnel, you will replay those first three levels a lot. I certainly remember getting my toe near the wall in the Wookiee Hole to make it shapeshift into a bell to hit the crows. I also clearly remember the last portion of the stage where you had to avoid those electric charges. So I guess my cartridge at first worked just like any other Battletoads cartridge, but now was skipping a level? Or maybe it was a problem with my console. Could it be that my cartridge always played like that and I was misremembering it, having my memories of the Wookiee hold being forged by years of playing the game on emulators? There was no simple way of knowing it for sure. The best way was to find someone with another Battletoads cartridge released by Connector and ask if their game also skipped level 2. Or maybe find someone who dumped the ROM, downloaded it, and then played it on an emulator. Unfortunately, I didn't know anyone who had the same game, and I couldn't find a dump of this specific bootleg version. I even thought about getting the hardware needed to dump my ROM, so maybe I could compare the code to the original release and see if the code for level 2 was still there. But the price of those devices is a bit high if you're only interested in dumping one or two games. So I kept looking for any clues on this, until I stumbled upon a Discord channel dedicated to Battletoads. I posted my story there, hoping to find some collector who could maybe collect Brazilian bootleg cartridges to confirm that the game was missing level 2. I couldn't find any, but I found some advice that was indeed very helpful. A person told me that if I had a flashcard, I could make use of a tool called Tape Dump to dump my cartridges ROM in a really clever way. Tape Dump turns the game program into audio that you can record and then decode as a ROM file. This way of storing software isn't new for anyone familiar with personal computers from the 80s. When I was a kid, my brother had a Brazilian ZX81 clone called TK85, and we used to type in games and then record them to cassette tapes. If you play those tapes on a regular cassette player, you would hear a sound similar to the one you used to hear when using a dial-up modem to access the internet. Anyway, the problem was I didn't have a flashcard, but buying one would be more interesting to me than buying the hardware for dumping ROMs in the more traditional way, as the flashcard serves another purpose, that is, to load other ROMs. So I decided to purchase one and give it a try. So the process goes like this. You save tape dumps ROM in your flashcard, boot the console with the flashcard in and run the ROM. You then select the appropriate mapper for the cartridge and the dumping rate. Tape dump stores itself in the console's memory, so you can remove the flashcard while the console is turned on and replace it quickly with the cartridge you want to dump. Then you check if the CPU didn't freeze and you run it, and it starts to make the noise of a computer being tortured. You then record this sound using a recording device or directly into your computer, and finally, you run another tool designed to convert the audio file into a ROM, and you're done. And that's exactly what I did. I used the cable directly from the audio output in the console to a microphone input in my computer, loaded my favorite DAW, and recorded the game. Depending on the dumping rate you select in tape dump, it can take a long time. In my case, it took 42 minutes. After recording the audio in my DAW, it was time to export it to a WAV file and then convert it to a ROM. But that's not so easy, as most softwares that do that, including the one recommended by tape dump's author, are DOS programs. So I downloaded the software and ran it using DOSBox. As DOSBox emulates an old machine, the program kept working for several minutes without anything but a blinking cursor on the screen. Eventually, it stopped working and told me it was done. I took the ROM and loaded it on an emulator and crossed my fingers. And there it was, working! I was so happy I had my own version of the game dumped. So the first thing I did was to play the game to see if it would skip levels when using the emulator, to rule out the possibility of being a problem with my clone console. And the same thing happened. Level 2 skip it. What if I tried to start in level 2 using a Game Genie code? Try that, and nope. It just started on level 3. Then I thought, 
What if I play the licensed ROM up to level 2, saved the game using an emulator save state, then loaded my ROM and tried to load that save state? Well, I tried it, but it didn't work. The emulator recognized this was a different ROM. So now it was time to explore the ROM file to see what was different in it. I loaded the software that allows you to compare hex files looking for differences. It also allows you to edit the files. So yeah, there were a bunch of differences. That was only natural since the game was translated. And not only that, but my bootleg version also made you start with 5 lives instead of 4 and infinite continues instead of just 3. One interesting thing you notice is that the intro text is completely visible on the hex editor, while the dialogue is not. That would maybe explain why Connector would only translate the intro. Later, I discovered the dialogue text was compressed, so that's why you can't see it directly in the hex editor. Then, I decided to revert those changes one by one and to load the modified ROM and play the game to see if I could access level 2. After a bunch of tries, there it was. Wookie Hole being played on my old connector ROM. Ok, but you must be asking yourself, why did connector make the game skip the Wookie Hole? Why not skip Turbo Tunnel, as it was the reason why most people couldn't enjoy the rest of the game? Well, when I was researching if the skipping of level 2 was a common bug, even in official releases, I found out that Battletoads would sometimes crash when played on NES clones. It had something to do with how the graphics are done in that stage, that some clones couldn't handle properly. So that made me rethink the reason why Connector translated the game in the first place. If you pay attention to the intro, it says, adaptado por Connector, that is, adapted by Connector, not just translated by Connector. So Connector interest wasn't translating the game in the first place, it was making sure the game would be playable on clone consoles, which made up for the majority of the consoles sold in Brazil. While they were changing the code for level 2, they must have stumbled on readable English text that could be easily translated, and then decided to translate it. As the dialogue was encrypted, they wouldn't mess with it. And if you pay close attention to the code, you'll see that they left some untranslated text, which seems to belong to the game's ending. I wouldn't know or never beat it. It makes sense, as most players will never get in touch with that. If the translation was a selling point, having just the intro translated should be enough to get the kids to buy the game. And that sums up my adventure in ROM hacking just to know if I had a buggy game or not. On my way, I discovered that sometimes hackers won't hack a game just to remove copyright info, but also to ensure their customers would get the best experience possible, or to avoid getting into trouble with refund requests. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna keep posting cover songs, but if this was interesting for you, I can make more of these now and then. Thanks for watching.